Welcome to the Big Picture Show with your host, Josh Tekel. We are the new media, so don't forget to like and share this podcast. This is the Big Picture Show, show number one with your host, Josh Tekel. We're still working out the kinks of our technical system here, so thank you for your patience. I wanted to talk a little bit about what this season of the Big Picture Show is about. We're going to be covering the issues relating to food, health, and climate. The nexus of these three things. How does our food affect not just our bodies, but the planet Earth? It's a new area. It's a new subject. For many people, they think they know what it's all about. They think, okay, that's just about eating less meat. We will be covering that. There will be some surprising revelations. But more than that, we're going to be showing you how your food can actually reverse climate change, potentially in the long run, maybe not today, but over time. So that's what we're going to talk about this season. I wanted to start with a little bit of mail that's come in through the mailbox. Okay, this is from the mailbox. Hi, guys. Looks like a useful book. He's talking about the Kiss the Ground book, which comes out on November 14th. You can pre-order that now. He says, looks like a useful book to instruct folks in value of local as much as can be, vegetarian diets, etc. Wonder if children, in quotes, are human or just pet gerbils. Hmm. If you're actually celebrating your reproduction, do you feel this is inconsistent with your avowed commitment to defend the environment, given the well-known effect of overpopulation? especially of us over-consuming global northerners on the planet? Question mark. Robert. Robert is, I assume, referring to our reference to our children in our newsletter. We often talk about our kids and say that this is one of our motivators, myself and Rebecca, my wife, one of our motivators for doing what we do is our children. Robert, I get the sense that you're saying that we either should not have had children or that people should not have more children. I don't think that's practical. I think we can make a healthy, thriving world for 10 billion people, and it's going to involve a change of agriculture, and that's what we're going to be talking about on this show this season. I'm not giving up my kids anytime soon. I don't think anyone else is, but interesting question, interesting on the gerbils. Another email. Hi, I hope you're doing well. I noticed a weight loss thing from you, and it looked like an ad. Not sure if if you were hacked or if this is something from you, but I'm really not interested in advertisements from friends on Facebook. I'd love to hear your opinion on environmental issues and your life. But if it is just selling me stuff, I might have to defriend you, Eric. Understood, Eric. This was actually a blog post about the things that the weight loss industry does not want you to know, namely that we are consuming a tremendous amount of commodity crop oils. Those oils in our diet affect our weight. We're going to talk more about that today with our incredible guest on the show, who I'm going to introduce soon. But there's a whole bunch of secrets in terms of our food, and it's not an ad. It's a reality. It's affecting us. I'm going to read a couple of interesting, interesting news pieces this week. The U.S. Defense Department takes climate change seriously, even as the president backs away from U.S. climate leadership. His top military commanders are planning for climate related threats and manning the front lines when they do happen. One of the components of climate change that makes it a threat or a risk to national security is that it can make already tenuous or, frankly, bad places much worse, says retired Rear Admiral David Titley. Titley led the U.S. Navy's task force on climate change, and he's now a professor of meteorology at Pennsylvania State University. Go, David Titley. And who knew? Who knew that Uncle Sam was preparing for the world to change? Now, the rest of the article goes on to talk about the fact the Navy is not concerned or does not concern itself as to why climate change is happening. They're not looking at the drivers. They're looking at the effects. 
and they're not ignoring it. The water under Colorado's eastern plains is running dry as farmers keep irrigating the Great American Desert. So we're talking about eastern Colorado's economy. It's grown stronger due to pumping irrigation water, but the vast underground reservoir has shrunk in the past six years twice the rate of the past 60. We're going to be speaking about desertification on this show and how we can reverse desertification, especially for farmers, especially in irrigated areas. All right, one more interesting one before we bring on our guest, John Rulak. Field of Machines. Researchers grow crop using only automation. This is from CNN. A farm in the United Kingdom is the first in the world to successfully plant, tend, and harvest a crop without a single person ever setting foot in the field, according to researchers and developers involved in the project. So this is the new frontier, automated farming. It's going to be completely centralized, completely done by computer, completely done by drones. This could be a good thing or a bad thing. What do you think? I think it has the potential for both and then some. Uh, robots growing our food. Hmm. What do we think? All right, I want to bring on our guest. Lots of great stuff in the news, but we can talk about that next time. Our guest today is John Rulak. He is the founder of a very amazing, successful company called Nutiva, which specializes in organic foods. I'm going to let John tell you more about his history. But I want to thank you for being on the show today, John. Good to be here. Very, very excited to have yeah, you on. Yeah, first show. Yep, and, uh, yep, show number one. I'm yeah. just going to adjust your microphone here. Okay, good. Yep. Excellent, good. Okay, uh, good. Great to, great to be here in Ojai. Always, always enjoy the beautiful uh, uh, climate and uh, people. It, it, is, it is a beautiful place, if, if not a seasonal, very seasonal place. You know, we're getting these unseasonal changes here in Ojai. Sometimes it's much hotter than it should be, much drier, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, I, I want to talk about Nutiva. I want to talk about what you do as a company. I want to talk about you as, because you're kind of an interesting guy. You're a, you're a founder of a big food company, um, but you're also really a food activist in your own way. And you're here in Ojai tonight giving a talk. What's, what's your talk going to be about tonight? Yeah, <clears throat> my talk's on ocean and perils and um, showing the dangers uh, when we take all this massive carbon and all this excess heat, and much of it is being stored in the oceans. And the oceans are now in the process of saying, we've had enough. And um, the uh, kind of the unvarnished reality is that the oceans are in the process of dying. <clears throat> the basic plankton, which which whales eat, uh, that's part of the food chain. They also happen to provide two thirds of our oxygen. They are slowly dissolving um, uh, because of the excess carbon. Uh, there's one report out from Germany showed that one third uh, or thirty percent of all of the plankton in the Indian Ocean has disappeared. Thirty percent. Thirty percent of all the plankton in, 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 in the, the Indian, Indian Ocean, Ocean have disappeared. Correct. Already. Already. So, yeah. so this is a, I would not call this good news. I would call this shocking to alarming yeah, yeah, news. Yes. And here's the, and here's the uh, news uh, just read recently. There's a particular type of whale in the North Atlantic uh, off the United States called the right whale. <clears throat> and researchers that specialize in tracking the right whale said th that they have, n have not seen this level of die-off in whales of the right whale they've not been recorded uh since the since then they when they were hunting for whales in the 17 and 1800s so so if, so whales are disappearing now so whales and if you're the if this sounds like being the right whale in the wrong place yeah this is not a good time to be a right whale <clears throat> right yeah and, uh, and the one thing i would say is the silver lining in all of this is yeah. Please tell us the, the silver, silver line, line is this is we, this is discouraging. Yeah, this. it is discouraging. Yes. we have an app for that. Okay, all right, and we all ahead. like apps. Yeah, we, and, we yeah. yeah, and the app for that is regenerative agriculture and restorative ocean farming, and that's what I'll be talking about tonight in Ojai, and that's what my articles. If you Google my name, John Rulak, and EcoWatch, mm -hmm. you can read some of the articles. And the good news is <clears throat> that soil health 
which is tied into that, is now becoming one of the most popular search terms in Google versus where it was 20 years ago or 10 years ago. So the level of interest in soil health, it's gotten to such a point that even politicos, which is a major insider DC publication, hmm. is actually talking about soil health and politics. Well, when I, would you think of that? When would you think that would happen? I, I would not. You know, I I got to admit, I have been I have been part of the cause of that increase in searches for soil health. I've been sitting here with a team of people. We've probably <laughs> done a million searches in the past okay, week. So right on. I think we've <laughs> skewed the numbers. But seriously. I, I want to hear more about this this major ocean issue that you're breaking the news of. Uh, I want everybody to go search for your articles on EcoWatch. Look for John Rulak, EcoWatch, okay? Um, and I want everybody to come to your talk tonight. Where? What time is the talk? <clears throat> the talk is uh, 7 o'clock uh, at the Ojai Retreat. Um, uh, which is in uh, which is in Miners Oaks, Miners Ojai, Oaks, um, uh, Ojai area. Right. So, and, so if you're in Los Angeles, even, and you don't have anything to do tonight, you might yeah. want to drive up here and spend an amazing evening in our beautiful town, Ojai. Yeah. And come to yeah. John's talk. Yeah. It's seven. Is it free? Is it open yeah. to the public? <clears throat> it's ten dollar donation. Ten dollar donation. And, and you yeah. can also uh, if you go to my uh, my uh, Facebook wall uh, uh, under John Rulak, uh, there's an event page with the details and stuff. Great. So yeah. So, so yeah, love to love to see you there and. Uh, so yeah. let's let's link our Facebook to uh, to that, uh, pretty please, the folks who are listening in the back room, and and John, I want to get into all of this stuff because this is big news: the whales, the acidification, all of this, right? Right. But but first, I I really want to know more about you. I I, I know you. You know right. you've 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 uh, you've been around for a while here in Ojai, uh, major influence in the food movement. Where did you grow up? I was born and raised in Pasadena. Pasadena. Okay. Yeah. My, my, right. my great-grandfather uh, came to Los Angeles in 1882. There was 10,000 people in the, in the uh, Los Angeles then. Okay. And, and um, Los Angeles in the 1960s had one of the worst air qualities in the world, uh, or at least in, in the United States at least. Hmm. Uh, so pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. And so it was very smoggy. It was hard for me to breathe. So hard I, for you to so, yeah. so we fast-forwarded now. Your grandfather, now we're up to your yes, life. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, it's my life. Okay, yeah, got yeah. It. As a young boy. Yes. Uh, uh, and so one of the things that, that was a, kind of a major influence is, is my parents, some people collect art or rare car, you know, cars or old cars. My parents decided to collect islands. <clears throat> so they bought a small little three-acre island in the Pacific Northwest, little, like 60 miles north of, of uh, uh, Seattle, and had no running water, <clears throat> no electricity. So we lived very simply. Wait, and basically, wait, 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 wait. You lived on the... Wait, <laughs> I, your we, parents bought an island. An island, and we spent, okay. like a, we spent like three, four weeks yes. a year yes. on a small little island. And so... For the was this like a James Bond? Because when I hear you have an island, I think of like James Bond. You know that not that high tech. That you know, wow, yeah, that's where yeah. the villains hang out is yeah. on the island. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was a, you know, uh, we lived like uh, basically like in a, a little like a modified tent structure. Uh, oh, so wanted... this is more Robinson Crusoe than James Bond. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm there's no electricity. Yeah, I see. And, okay. And uh, so I spent weeks at a time next to the ocean yes. and with no electricity and just being in nature. I see. Okay. And then and then t and 11 months a year in a very polluted environment and going back and forth. So that influenced me. Then when I was 20, they dumped nuclear waste, a truck driver, unidentified truck driver, uh, nine miles from my house. I was living in Altadena just by Pasadena. I see. Okay. And, and that uh, the DJ decided to talk about that. That was the internet, basically back then. Was a radio. People listen to radio. Oh, so that you had a, a you had a radio. Was it? <clears throat> this uh, was a, this was in Los Angeles. Do you now. remember the station? Was I, I it? Can't um, remember. I can't remember. This was like this K, was like like K Earth or something. Could could have been K, K Earth. Earth. Yeah. You know, yeah. probably back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Great and, station. And so that set me off to yep. like you know to look at the environment. And in my early twenties, I became an environmentalist. So you you became an environmentalist in your twenties. Now. What kind of a what kind of a kid were you before then? What kind of a young were you like a nerd or were you a sports guy? Were you uh, you know were you were you popular with the ladies? I mean you know right. Let's, okay. let's yeah. talk about what I was kind a, of I was I was kind of uh, I was a sports guy. I played basketball. I mean not like a jock, right? But I played basketball and I I I uh, I was I actually I played basketball the first two years in high school and then my parents moved. 
to to an island next to the little island that we used to have. They bought another little island. Of course, <laughs> part of it. That's and what then, happens. And then I decided to I decided to like uh, like head back to SoCal. So I moved okay. on my own. I was sixteen. Oh wow! And and uh, uh, and so that was like. Uh, um, and then I was also an entrepreneur. I had five businesses by the time I was thirteen, so I was. The so only... you've always. So what? Yeah. Okay, I, we're about to talk about the big issues, yeah, but you know, yeah. it's 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 so <laughs> interesting because, you know, what when somebody is successful, you are a successful person. You don't have to be an activist. You don't have to come no. and give talks on the ocean. Yeah. You know, you can um, you could probably find another island if you wanted to, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but you continue to do these really, um, you know, very provocative kind of informational right. activism. So I'm trying to get the John Rulak mind. Right. Like, entrepreneur makes businesses. So in right. one sense, yeah. you know, I can say, well, you're just a business guy. But total activist, on the other hand. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I started out with 500 hemp bars. And, you know, now we have 110 employees. And, and we're our products are coconut or hemp or chia or red palm products are in... 20,000 stores around the world. Uh, but I'm also an environmental activist. So I, I'm, I'm kind of a culture hacker. <clears throat> so I look at like, I, I, I've cool. been given a lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of opportunities in my world. Uh, and I want to, I love the, I love nature. And so I've decided to use my talents and skills, whatever, whatever little that I have uh, to the, to my best of my abilities. And so uh, I use Native as a platform uh, and and the skills that I have to uh, to to change the world. I want to revolutionize the way the world eats, and that's that's what I've been working on for a while. Okay, you want to revolutionize the way the world eats. Um, how do we eat now? <clears throat> the majority of the population in North America mostly eats industrial goop sold as quote food, and it's and ninety percent of the of pe most people's diet. Is 15 crops or less, 15, you know, uh, including you know, uh, you know, beef, pork, etc. Mm -hmm. So, the, what we want to do, if we want to have a better diet, is to have more. I like to call it the, a rainbow diet. So, eat lots of different types. <clears throat> Don't just eat tomatoes and potatoes. Got it. You know, go go to the go to the uh, the farmers market and and look at vegetables that scare you. Like, what is that? How do you even cook that? A kohlrabi or or a particular type of kale yes. or, you know, purple carrots. And right. that's what that's what I try to do. Eat mostly plants, organic. Okay. So so one of the sayings that uh, we have with my daughter, Athena, she's three and a half, one of the children that the gentleman in the email was was yeah. trying to get me to get beautiful rid of. Beautiful young redhead. Yes, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, uh, amazing child. Uh, both 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 of our children are incredible. But uh, one of the sayings we have is colors in your food mean nutrition. Now, obviously, that doesn't apply to, you know, like a soft drink that's purple or orange or How something. About licorice, like that. does that count? You know, red black. licorice. Well, I guess, you know, <laughs> we're trying just to create guidelines. Joking. You know, we're trying to create right. uh, an incentive to right. choose things from Mother Nature that have vibrancy. And, and how do you teach that to a child? How do you convey that, that complicated information? If a vegetable or a fruit is bright, if it has a color, yellow, orange, you know, green, uh, these things are nutritious. Black, purple, and, yeah. and all sorts of different colors. So right. that's important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so that's how we're eating, and that's where you want us to go in terms of our food. Yeah, more diversity. More diversity. And when you eat a more diverse diet from different types of plants, yes. you get a more diverse nutrition. Right. Some plants are more higher in minerals. Yes. Other ones are higher in antioxidants. Yes. And so instead of having to think about the numerical, uh, you know, reductionist view of I need to get this amount of vitamin A or this vitamin C, you eat a diverse diet and you naturally get that. And and so, you know, I want to talk about so many things. You know, we're gonna we're gonna hit on diet. We're gonna hit on genetic modified organisms. I want to hit on pesticides, and I want to get back to oceans. Okay. And I, I want to do that all in like five minutes. No, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll do it over the course of the next thirty minutes. Um, and, and then I want to hear a little bit more about your journey, how you became the founder of this major company, and and you know what? I still I, we got to get in there and understand what how what makes John Rulak tick? You know, we're not quite there yet, but but so let's let's go back to the colors of food. 
How does that relate to soil health? <clears throat> why, why is, you know, you mentioned soil health is now a, a very Googled term, even by politicians. I would venture some of our politicians would be able to Google that more than others. I wonder if all of our politicians know how to use Google. I am, I am concerned about some of the people we have in leadership. <clears throat> But um, it's a very Google term. So maybe they're more Yahoos. Yeah, maybe they're more <laughs> Yahoos. Dun, 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 sh, uh, Yahoo. Um, yeah, you know, Yahoo finally s uh, set down. They finally put aside Instant Messenger after all this time. I felt a part of my high school experience die when they killed right. Instant Messenger. That yeah. was the first yeah. I am, right. uh, but that happened recently. Right. So, but so, let me jump. Let me jump into the diversity. Yeah. <clears throat> so we talk about. Our health. So the, the the thing to understand is, if we follow what's healthy for the uh, for ourselves and for our own diet, that's often can be healthy for the soil and the and the climate. So to give you an example, in America today, the majority of the crops that we grow, corn, <clears throat> soy, canola, wheat, <clears throat> cotton, and if people are eating mostly those crops, that's what's being grown, and the, the pests get more concentrated because they're, they're looking for that, and there's lack of diversity in the soil and the ecosystem when we add more different crops. So crop diversity. So re for regenerative agriculture, crop diversity is important. So uh, regenerative uh, farmers will grow multiple crops, and, and some who are grass farmers like Gabe Brown and um, Soil Carbon Cowboys is a great video if you want to tune into some of what they're doing there. Um, he's growing like 20 different grasses and he'll have like um, a sunflower and, and different uh, legumes mm. uh, in, in that. And then that, that grows, it attracts bees, <clears throat> more butterflies, cows come in and eat those grass. They convert that solar energy uh, into, uh, into more protein. Uh, they, they, they poo and they pee and then that gets broken up and back into the soil. <clears throat> and ironically, this whole pasture movement, which is basically creating more diverse grass systems going from peren going from annuals <clears throat> to perennials. And again, this is how we purchase our food and what kind of food. So the difference between buying industrial meat means you're voting <clears throat> to plant more Monsanto corn, <clears throat> more Monsanto soy, more neonic destroying you know that kills bees that's dipped in all that dips in all these seeds when they plant so mm. every gmo seed is dipped in something that kills <clears throat> bees okay okay i'm gonna but we, i want to go back to the food I'm i want to go back to the food but yeah. but we you've thrown out two or three or four big bombs that we have to go back and and deal with okay. but but um yeah please please go ahead and finish and and, and you know you're talking so about this, this the diet what i'm saying is yeah. the uh, the nutrition in pasture meat, because they're eating this diverse grass and not the corn and soybeans, there's like up to two to three times the amount of omega three mm. in the in pasture the, meat, in the in meat, the meat, in the meat. So you're talking mm -hmm. about you're talking about the difference between pasture raised meat versus industrial or what we call CAFO, industrial meat, where the cows are all in a pen and they're fed GMO corn and, and soy. So so just for the, the folks tuning in, the folks listening at home, uh, you know, what we have is a system of raising cattle in this country. What would you say, John, what's the percentage of cattle that would be in a CAFO, a confined animal <clears throat> feed operation, I, I, versus I, cattle out on pasture? Yeah. And just the, guessing. Just the, guess. that, that operation, the CAFO, is probably 95% of all meat or 98 in, in America. Now, remember, they start out in pasture the first year. Then yes. they go to the finishing feedlot. And, and so that's deceiving yeah. in, terms of, yeah. in terms of if somebody says, is this pasture raised? Yeah, that's One the, yeah. could say it yes, is, yeah, even want, though the cow has lived uh, you know, a majority or at least a portion of its life in, in one of those horrible, you know, Feedlots, which we've all seen from the interstate, you know, right. we yeah. know what they smell like. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. yeah, and and uh, so that's and then also the vitamin you know, E levels are higher. So so the idea is just to understand is when you eat a more regenerative diet, not only is it good for us, more nutrition, more nutrient dense, mm. it's also good for the planet. And we need to pay attention to the planet because all that excess carbon we we're talking about the oceans, that excess carbon from industrial agriculture, which is the which is a more of a contributor to climate change than Chevron and Exxon and the entire transportation industry. Agriculture through tillage, <clears throat> through, uh, through nitrogen chemical synthetic fertilizers, 
which, which is eliminated through the regenerative uh, agriculture because we grow plants that fix the nitrogen from the atmosphere. And, uh, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to uh, improve this, you know, the soil quality. And when we, do, when we do this, then we can relieve the pressure of the oceans. We can take that carbon that's been falling into the oceans for, for the last 100 years, 150 years, uh, accelerating be, through through the industrialization of society, both energy and, and food, and we can return that carbon, which is a food producing asset, to the soil <clears throat> through photosynthesis. Hundreds of millions of R and D are already proven. Don't need a new technology, and the oceans can thrive. Us humans can thrive with better nutrition, and we can go from 400 parts per million, which is we're on the way to 450, and come back to 280 parts per parts per million. And life can be good. And this is this is uh, there's a new another book out called Drawdown. Mm -hmm. We also have your book coming out, which yep. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing. I've seen some previews, obviously. Yep, Exci um, exciting. Um, Drawdown yeah. is great. Yeah, it, Drawdown yeah. outlines a hundred of the top things. And uh, Paul Hawkins, the author of that, and I just understand it's the number seven best selling book in New York Times, and they can't keep it in stock. So that's great. So, uh, so yeah. Drawdown. That's a, that's a that's a great book for everybody to get if you. Um, if you're buying one book this year, buy Drawdown. Obviously, if you're buying two, you should buy Drawdown and Kiss the Ground. Uh, yeah, it's a good combination. Yeah, yeah. And, and also Nativa yeah. supported Drawdown, and, and through our programs uh, that we, we support, uh, you know, sustainable regenerative agriculture, we, we supported the, the production development of that, that book, so we're proud of that. And Paul's, a, as a friend of mine, doing really good work. Good. So I, so I want to go back. You mentioned, you know, look, you cannot mention eating beef and not have some controversy, okay? You think? I, 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 was I mean, a, come yeah. on. I, come I on. hear you. I hear you. <laughs> this is, you know, beef has got to be probably, aside from GMOs, the most controversial food topic of our time. I agree. Of our time, okay? And, and, and there are so many, you know, good arguments against eating beef. You know, there's a... A movie, Cowspiracy, obviously on Netflix, um, that that really, and, and a new film that just came out um, uh, that is really uh, all about the negatives right. of eating beef. But what you're saying, and what we looked at in the Kiss Ground book, and, and to me, this is an open investigation. This is not an open and shut case, but what you're saying is that pasture-raised, real pasture-raised beef from start to finish, never goes into a CAFO, can be healthier, and that it can contribute to building soil health <clears throat> and contribute to the sequestration of greenhouse gases. Do you believe that's true? And, and, and what do you say to people who are just vehemently anti-beef? <clears throat> right. And you, do you personally eat beef? I don't, I've, I've never seen you eat beef. Uh, I was a vegetarian for 14 years. Yep. <clears throat> now today I mostly eat plants. Yes. And I do eat some uh, some red meat. Uh, you know, every every week or two mm -hmm. I might have a ha have uh, have some you know uh, uh, have something. Okay. But um, first off, <clears throat> those who pass who focus on pasture beef, yes. such as Gabe Brown and others around the country, they're increasing the organic matter. Gabe Brown through through using cattle, mm -hmm. <clears throat> growing multiple crops, and, and uh, They've increased their organic matter in the soil. That means the carbon is increasing. That the and and they're increasing their ability for water to penetrate in the soil from like three percent to over seven percent. <clears throat> Cowspiracy, unfortunately, fifty percent of it was right. <clears throat> Industrial CAFO meat <clears throat> destroying the planet, number one environmental crisis. Yes, Ag uh, you know, and and villain agree. Yes. <clears throat> Not a good thing. Yeah. Not no, yeah. Like, I don't. I don't know anyone in their right mind who would say. We need to put more animals into more yeah, feedlots. Yeah. Except for there's one company that would that, that would disagree with you. Well, I'd, I I hope they come on the show. Monsanto. Well, I, I would <clears> love because to they, have because I'd Monsanto have... is making money um, with these CAFOs. But cowspiracy, unfortunately, the other half yes is completely made up and is not based on facts. And and their matter of fact, they're afraid. I they're afraid to have someone like me come on and discuss with them. So if I would love anywhere, anytime I'm willing to debate the people from Cowspiracy, they had an event coming up. I said, why don't you bring me over here? And they go, oh, no, I not really want to do that. You okay. Know, you know, All right. So so the idea is I mean, is, I is think that, you should. I think they should come yeah, on the show yeah. with you. I'd, I'd, and, I'd, I'd and love it. I promise yeah. to be a, a neutral party, as yeah. neutral right. as I, yeah. as I yeah. can possibly yeah. be. The, the, the thing to understand is yes. – <clears throat> 
is that we had more ruminants on the planet, you know, uh, we know with the buffalo, et cetera. Now we're bringing back more buffalo and that's, and that's a great thing. Yeah. But cows, we need, we, there's more gra- there's more rangeland than agriculture, than, than, than ag lands. Yeah, and considerably the, more. Yeah. I, I mean, and the uh, way to, the globally, only, the yes. only way you can restore the grasslands to sequester more carbon and yes. increase yes. the, the water capacity of that soil mm. if you leave it if you fence it off it will only get worse and that's what's happening and and if you let the cows mismanagement the way much of the rangeland it's mismanaged the cows walk the same pattern week after week month after month and they destroy and their the carbon is leaving the soil but when you manage it intensively and these are people who you know, I've been to these places mm. we've seen the research yes. it act, and they move it and that actually does that but it's it sequesters the carbon, but it's so not it's about it's understand. about managing the herd <clears throat> exactly and keeping them on the move. Yeah. So so we mimic the native grazers, yes. the the great bison that once roamed the American prairie. You know, estimates uh, of the bison before European settlers somewhere in the range of forty to sixty million of these herd animals roaming the North American continent, and and obviously. We've removed yeah, them, yeah. and and there was there was antelope and elk and a lot yes. a lot of other others that that have, have left us as well. And, and you know what I just found out that's so disappointing. I um, I do eat I do eat meat, and uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll get some Facebook comments on this section. I am positive we'll have some uh, yeah. some some interesting interactions around this. But but I do eat meat, and one of the things that I was so happy about was that seeing bison on menus especially yeah. in Ojai. I just found out 95% of bison in America is grain-fed. That is exceptionally disappointing. So, yep. so that's, yep. a, that's yeah, just that in, uh, that's just new information. So, so disappointing. Right. Because and w- I thought they were all free-range. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that, that is. One thing else I wanted to say, I tell my vegan friends, and some of them understand this, if you're a vegan... Do you want Roundup in your in you know in the air and, and sprayed on your vegetables from the rain and and poison your crops? You don't. If if you're a vegan and a vegetarian and you want high quality ve- organic vegetables free of Monsanto Roundup, then the number one contributor to spraying Mount Roundup um, around the globe is is corn and soy production for animal production. There's some ethanol in the United States that's a big contributor. But in, in South America, and this is it goes up into the atmosphere, it goes in the water, yeah. the forests, e- everywhere. So you want to promote, and it's hard for vegetarians to get this, but if you don't want Roundup in your in your you know in your blood system and on your vegetables, you want to tell all your meeting friends, <clears throat> eat less meat, eat fifty percent less meat, mm. <clears throat> and the meat you do eat, if you are gonna eat meat, yeah. You know, I'd like you to be a vegetarian, right. but if you're not going to become a vegetarian, yes. eat 100% grass pasture meat. And that is the best for the environment. Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't destroy more rainforest. That's a, that's a, that's a myth. And, and it actually helps take some of that carbon and puts it back into the soil. And we don't need Roundup and we don't destroy the water. And mm-hmm. we're not, we don't have all this manure that's, that's going up in the atmosphere. And the cows have healthy stomachs. Cows fed at CAFOs have unhealthy stomachs, unhappy stomachs, because the corn, the GMO corn is designed for to burn for fuel. So they make it so both burn for fuel, the plant, mm. and also for cows' health. And that's the combination to try to do both is not good. And so it's hard for vegetarians to understand this. And if the real enemy of vegetarians and of, and of people who are into regenerative agriculture using meat is Monsanto. And the idea that 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 um, vegetarians should be attacking the pasture meat, which is going on right now, mm. um, and in the UK, uh, out of the University of Oxford, just came out with a report that said that that pasture meat, 100% pasture, you know, meat is at the same is as just as dam- you know just as damaging to as CAFO meat, yes. which is I, completely I did, fallacy. I did see that report, and that's making the rounds on the internet right yeah, now. Complete fallacy. As showing uh, this this pasture-raised meat is is very bad, if not as bad yeah, yeah. as CAFO yeah, meat. Yeah, and imagine this. Yeah. <clears throat> so was that report, do you think that report was 
was it funded wrong, you know, by, by people with an agenda, or did they look at the wrong numbers? How does one come to a conclusion <clears throat> yes. yeah, if it's, it's not true? Yeah, yeah, so it's very, one, the university <clears throat> is, is, Monsanto's paid over $75 million in contracts over the last couple decades. The, the university published a puffery book about Monsanto, and the, the website of this, of this so-called food think tank only has one reference to Monsanto and everything they've done in the last 10 years. How are they about healthy food, climate, soils, food access, and only one reference to Monsanto? I'm very positive. So there you just go. A, there you go, folks. Yeah, you yeah. heard it on the Big Picture show first. I, you know, I want to hear from people at home. I do want to hear their thoughts on this because, you know, to tell vegetarians to tell their meat-eating friends not to not eat meat. Eat less. Eat less. 50% okay. less. Okay. Okay. And eat a different type of meat. That may run against the grain yes, and, of and many vegetarians. It is. It I, runs I, was a, yeah. I was a vegetarian yeah. for a very, very long time. I, I was too. You, I was too. I was extremely righteous you think? about my food choices. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I was too. And the reason being is if we don't do this... If you like to breathe, do, do vegetarians and vegans like to breathe? If you like to breathe, folks, you might want to think about not putting so much carbon as a planet, as, the, as our ecosystem, as our economy, into the oceans and dissolving the plankton. So if you like to breathe, mm. you want to promote the end of CAFOs. CAFOs are worse than the worst coal-burning power plant. If you don't like you know, coal burning power plants and destroying the atmosphere. Yes. Then you want to get rid of CAFOs and more people are not becoming vegan as, as a, that's not like a huge, it's the people who want to become vegan. They become aware of it. It's growing. It's great. I go to vegan restaurants. If I, if I had to choose a restaurant where I want to go to, mm. I go to organic vegan restaurants. Yes. There's I love some, that. And mo most of my customers, many of my customers excellent are vegan. vegan. Yeah. And think about this. Excellent vegan Why would the founder of the largest organic superfood brand in North America Who's most a lot of our customers are vegan? Why am I talking about this? I, I am uh, there's wondering no money. that myself. I mean, like I'm, you know, my, my CMO I'm, is probably wondering, I, and my CEO I, I, is wondering. I'm sure some and, of your and, staff is yeah, is, yeah. is concerned and, at this very moment yeah, as we're yeah. live on it's, Facebook. Yeah, it's yeah. because it's because I love nature. I love my life, and yes. I and I realize by studying ecosystems, what I've done for the last thirty years is that there's this thing called the carbon cycle. We can't ignore the carbon cycle, hmm. and most vegetarians. And most people yes. don't understand the carbon cycle. Yes. Once you do, you realize we need to become carbon cycle. We need to be the friend of the carbon cycle. Mm. And just saying, don't eat meat at all. But then just, if, if you're not going to listen to that, just then just eat the worst meat because we're not going to talk about that downside. And, um, you know, we need to go to solar. We need to go to wind. Yes. And we need to to go to a regenerative diet and that that we need a big 10 approach. Veg, more vegetarians. Great. Yes. More regenerative meat. Great. Mm. Let's mm. let's 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 get on with it and uh, um, help uh, help Mother Earth. So Mother so, Earth needs help. So you're more of an all of the above type solution totally. type person. Um, I'm wondering I'm wondering what role the GMOs, in your opinion, have to play in all of this? Because interestingly enough, we've gotten some really interesting emails, folks, and I'll, I'll read them in episode two in our second show about uh, different opinions on genetically modified organisms. If you're just tuning in, you're listening live to the Big Picture Show. I'm your host, Josh Tickell. Today, we have John Rulak here in the studio at the Big Picture Ranch. John Rulak is founder of a company called Nutiva, a very large organic and natural foods company. And John's, you know, John's a firebrand. He, he is a uh, very successful, uh, you know, entrepreneur. He does not have to come onto shows like this and, and rile up people. Uh, but I think your cause is very big and your commitment <clears throat> is very big. So, you know, from your perspective, both as an entrepreneur and as a food activist, where do we stand with GMOs today in America, in your opinion? Uh, the situation with GMOs is it was sold uh, as this great new, you know, agricultural technology, and starting in the in the eighties and nineties, the most many of the scientists that worked in the FDA at the time all said 
that there that they had significant concerns about allergic reactions, mm-hmm. about the fact that um, they didn't believe that Monsanto when Monsanto said there would never be any gene fragments in the in the food. So when you ingest GMOs today, you're not just ingesting like GMO corn. It's not just corn. Mm. You're getting gene fragments, unknown gene fragments that have never shown up. You know, you're starting to, de- you know, there's like novel in some of these foods. Now there's like novel proteins and uh, people are starting to wonder why is it that there was no such thing? as a peanut allergy concern in the 1970s and 80s. Mm. There wasn't. You yes. could t- you could eat, you could have a peanut butter, you know, jelly sandwich in at your school. You can't today. Um, why is it that there was no fertility clinics in in the 1970s and 80s? You there no, no nobody there was no reason to have a fertility I, I, clinic. I always thought the reason there was no fertility clinics is because they had disco in the yeah. 1970s. And that, could and that just inspired but then, but, but, but the, then maybe the when disco millennial fell population out, boom, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's been a lot of health issues. Yes. So uh, allergens, um, the, you know, autism used to be one out of 10,000. Like yes. I like I, and now it's yes. one out of 50 boys and it's on the way to potentially one out of 15 or one out of 20. Mm. Uh, it is out of control. Now, uh, when you ask yes. at, that the universities today, the mod, like, let's say UC Davis mm-hmm. or Iowa and say, should we do research on what environmental impacts? What are we doing differently? Why is it there's a surge of allergies? Yes. Why is there a surge of autism? Yes. Why is there a surge of lack of fertility in women? There's fertility clinics everywhere. And the, some of the professors who ask that question, they say, let's do research. It's not being funded mm. because Monsanto and other big pharma industries mm. are the majority funders of these, of these uh, universities. And so... With GMOs, more people are now concerned about it, and they want to see that labeling. There was going to be a labeling law. We yes. had it going in Vermont. My friend Will Allen, mm. my mentor and friend Will Allen, who's an organic farmer, 80-year-old friend uh, from Vermont, he helped pass that. And then Congress did an end run and passed the Monsanto Dark Act and prevented a labeling and they had this whole process and now the Trump administration is in charge of thinking about what they might do sometime perhaps in the future um yes. and, but, but, and yeah and so I, that's I mean, what's for, with GMOs for, for viewers and listeners one of the important things i think that people need to know is there is at least one label that connotes no GMOs that's the non-GMO with the butterfly there's the non-GMO label but also does doesn't the organic standard Stipulate that uh, USDA organic doesn't that mean no GMOs in that food? Uh oh, you're smiling. This is going to be bad news. I can, <laughs> How far do you want to go down I can the rabbit feel hole? Feel the bad news coming. How far do you want to go down the I rabbit can fe- hole? Now, the, but the standard so let's, let's, does let's, stipulate non GMOs. Let, let, does it not? Let, let, let's in, let's in discuss print, that in the so, print of the standard. Yeah, right. You're not allowed to use GMO seeds, but the GMO sector has contaminating many crops. Okay, so, so, we're, in seeing, Euro- so we're seeing contamination. Yes. I know we're seeing contamination yes. in food. And in Europe, yes. they have actually have a standard. Yes. So actually, they don't test for GMOs in the United States of organic food. So un- uh, you're not required to. So unfortunately, you're seeing some contamination. The other thing about okay. GMOs... But, but if you are eating USDA certified organic, is the level level is very small? We, we we could say yeah, there may be contamination, and and but that, it's yeah. unintentional. Correct, for, correct. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, so, and and the other thing is just to avoid, if you just avoid corn, yes, and soy, yes, and canola, those three. That's the that's the big three for for GMOs in in America today. The other thing to understand is, and, and I think it's important for folks at at home to know that corn and soy, the primary use of those two is animal feed. Right. So if you're eating CAFO meat, if you're just eating from XYZ burger joint, that's CAFO mm-hmm. meat, unless yes. specified otherwise. Yes. That means it's got those crops in it, Yeah, most and, likely GMO crops. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. And not only that, is the, the vast majority of all the crops that are grown uh, G- using GMO technology in America today and Canada and around the world yes. is they are designed to allow the spraying of Monsanto Roundup and mm. And that is a very controversial. It's now in the process of potentially being banned in Europe. France just says they're not going to vote for re-approving that. The state of California is now requiring Roundup, Monsanto Roundup, glyphosate, uh, a labeling as a cancer-causing, um, suspected cancer-causing California. Yes. And there is 
uh, investigations and lawsuits because what's come out is, is Monsanto <clears throat> has been <clears throat> illegally mm. uh, um, uh, doing the way they do the, the, the health studies and the tests. They're now finding there's a lot of misleading information, and that's what's based on this lawsuit. For example, mm. Mm. when Monsanto yes. submits to federal agencies yes. for safety testing, they submit under glyphosate, which is one one ingredient, Gly gly glyphosate. Glypho glyphosate. 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 Okay, yes. yes. One of those hard words to yeah, say. Gly glyphosate. Yes. So that's one ingredient. But what the what the farmer sprays and what they sell in the marketplace is not just that single ingredient. Yes. It's multiple ingredients, and they have these things called adjuncts. Yes. And and other additives. And when they t and when they test for the safety, they only do the single ingredient. What they sell is the multiple ingredient. When they test those for safety. It's much more toxic, and, and uh, um, so so we're not testing for these products. Well, they're te they're testing for the individual, but they are selling it. So very slight, very slight of hand move. I see. I see. And, and that's why mm. Monsanto has actually been was I believe they were banned from the EU Parliament because they were so been so much misleading information, and they have. I, I would actually like to have them on the show. I, yeah. I think it would be. I think it would be amazing. I, in fact, I invite, if there's anyone out there that works for any of the companies that um, you've mentioned, right. it would be wonderful Bring them on. for them to step <laughs> forward yeah. and to have a conversation. You'd come back to the show, yeah. wouldn't you, yeah, for that? I'd love to. I think that would yeah. be amazing because really, you know, we know, we know that there are some bad corporate actors out there, right? You think? And, and, and some of them are messing with our food. Look, the U.S. food system... Look, it doesn't take a genius to walk into a grocery store and look at the ingredient labels at what's in the aisle. And and my goodness, some of that stuff is just obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. toxic. And isn't it isn't it ironic that the same food manufacturer in the United States sells a completely different product in Europe? We you know, interestingly enough, we just got a um we got a question. Uh just got a question. Said is John coughing? Is he having an allergic reaction to the fires? I have I've been in the in the fire zone up in you've northern been, California. You've been yes. in northern California. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. And so, uh, you know, for folks who are listening or tuning in from other places in the world or other places in America, there are uh, <laughs> some very serious fires that are happening in northern California. Yeah, over like seventy thousand acres. Seventy, and and there has been some reporting indicating that the California fire season is getting worse as we enter this time of changing climate. Um, so I want to get back to what you're saying, John. The, so the issue here is that there's a lack of transparency. There's a lack of testing. And there's a lack of accountability. Is that really where, what you're, what, you know, to summarize the situation? What can folks at home do? People who want to support the soil, people who want to support the ocean, how can people engage in a more healthy for them diet and a more healthy for the planet diet. And and bear in mind, we've got some very strict <clears throat> vegans listening. We've got some vegetarians listening. We've probably got some folks listening who are like, don't tell me that I can't have that. That, that hamburger, that hamburger's right, mine, right, baby. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. how do you appeal to all these yeah, different yeah. people? Yeah, I think one is, you know, become more educated about food and, and the impact of the environment and your health. So learn more. That's a, that's one thing to do. Yes. And and I would encourage to, you know, choose organic. Like a lot of vegetarians are now um, purchasing uh, products like the Impossible Burger, you know, which which we know if you test or or some of these other products may have levels of, of Roundup. So I think just because they're vegetarian but they're not organic, isn't necessarily good for the environment. So choose choose more organic. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. um, if you are going to eat beef, eat less of it. Yes. Or become a vegetarian if you want to do that. That's a great option also. Right. Uh, and, 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 then, and choose pasture meat. Pasture raised meat. Yeah. And, and, you know, folks at home, you have the option. We all have the option of, okay, I'm not going to be a vegetarian. I know that. But one meal a day or one day a week, you can... Say, okay, look, I'm going to give my body a break, right. and I'm going to give the environment a break. 
uh, and 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 sort of go a little easier. You go with more salad, more vegetable options for that meal, and, right? And try, you know, I I eat meat like once every ten or fifteen days, so that yeah. works for me. I mean, there's you don't need to eat meat every day or every other day, so right. Uh, uh, and try. It, it's eating. hard with the fast yeah. food world that we have, right. you know, right. especially if you spend a lot of time in your car. Yeah, those, right. Those you know those fast food joints I know are just it's so convenient. And the other thing is try eating five more vegetable fruits that you've never had before. All right. Okay. And eat more local. Eat more local. And that's and that's, you know, going back to our conversation about farmers markets and things like that that we're going to be covering more yeah. in forthcoming episodes yeah. of the show. Yeah. And the other thing is be on the lookout for what these vegetable oils. And one of the downsides of this CAFO corn soy bean, you know, complex is mm. Cows and, uh, uh, you know, and the CAFOs, they're not eating just corn or soy. They're eating corn and soy meal. So we have all this leftover vegetable oil, which is very rich uh, in omega-6s, which we don't need so much of. We have way too much omega-6s. They use hexane to process it. And the average American used to be around a 3 to 1 ratio of omega, omega-6 to omega-3. And, uh, and that plays an important role in our brain function, mm -hmm. skin function, heart function, hormonal function. Today, the average American is around 10 to 1 or 15 to 1 because of these industrialized vegetable oils and junk food. And, uh, and so we need to move away from eating those kind of to, to more uh, actual food, you know, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, you know, legumes, herbs, mushrooms. And eat a more diverse diet. You know, uh, it's just like um, what would happen if you designed a company where there was only white European males in the company. You, you might have something like America, kind of sometimes. <laughs> you know, you know, like like in terms okay. of like of the way I things was, are running. I we need diversity. Sure. I'm just saying, like the idea is the idea is diversity. <laughs> okay, diversity. Like, in, Got like it. if you yes. go to our company, we're yes. like a United Nations. Right. We don't own, we don't only want five. Like in the like we don't yeah. want five people who are all white men running yes. our company. Yes. You know. We Got have it. people from all the different different, right. and and well, that's and where our customers source, are. And you source, you and they, have, source they bring different things. Right? They bring different things. Yeah. So that's the idea: yeah. is diversity. Maybe that was. I, I, I'm not. I'm not against white people. My point right, is right, right. No, that I, we need I, the I, diversity. Yes. We're our, we're obviously white. Yes, you know. Yeah, no. Yeah. Two white men, yeah. as a matter of fact, so we, sitting we, in this room yeah. together. Yeah, it's not just the food, but right. we need we need that, and uh, and and so uh, that's that's there's strength in that. Um, there is strength in diversity, and I, yeah. and I think uh, as Americans, uh, we realize that as a country, this country is obviously built from many cultures, many countries, many places, many backgrounds. I like the list of things we can do. I like the idea of going more local. I like the idea of going more plant-based when possible. Um, and, and I think, you know, there is, a, there is a bigger context question, which is, each of us is very busy in our lives. We, we live in a busy time. We live in a time of, of cynicism where we tend to look at the negatives of the world. You guys at home know what I'm talking about, especially, you know, especially today in America. G going back to you, and we're, we're about to close out the show, but, but really, what makes John Rulak tick? Why do you continue to be active on these issues? Will th would that inspire other other people who are busy, who have yeah. busy lives? You have yeah. a busy life. Right. Why are you Why are you taking time of, out of your life to come here and talk to me to do the Oceans in Peril talk tonight at seven p.m. in Ojai? Yeah. Why are you doing these things, John? What I, What motivates you? I I like to spend time in nature. I like to spend time looking at at uh, bees. You know, uh, going to the ocean. Um, uh, being around trees and hiking and things. And I love nature and. I see nature, we have an assault against nature. Mm. We're destroying the very basis of the fabric of life. It, it pains me. I, I, I see, the, see this, and, and so I want to I wanna use what, what, you know, the time I have on this planet to, to see if we can live in a more balanced, harmonious way. Maybe call me maybe a crazed visionary about that, but, yeah. but that's, what I, that's what I'd like to see. Uh, and um, um, it's something that... Uh, that, that uh, I think a lot of people do. It's question is how do we do that? We maybe have some disagreements, and we're we're going to have that. Uh, um, and 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 part of me, I I, I am a bit. I, I, I do kind of shake it up and, and and a bit controversial. I sometimes get into it. You know, we all we all uh, you know. I sometimes have email exchanges with different people in our movement. And they'll get pissed because I'll go like, Hey, why are we doing this? Yeah. 
Right. Um, but that's uh, that's kind of uh, that's been my thing. I mean, I started composting, saying, "Why are we throwing banana peels in landfills in the '90s?" And that was my thing. I went around and changed and and set up home compost programs around the United States and wrote a book called Backyard Composting. And now people are all into composting. I say, "Yeah, I was into it 25 years ago." People are catching up, you know. Um, but but uh, yeah. So uh, but it's great to be on your show and. Uh, um, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing your new book out. I think you're, people have been saying a lot of good things about it. And uh, people, people have been. People have been. Um, what, how can people find you? How can people get in touch with you? How can people learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, um, you, can go, you can follow me on Facebook under John Rulak. Also, I have a website, johnrulak.com. That's R-O-U-L-A-C. Mm-hmm. Um, EcoWatch, that's where a lot of my articles. I'm working on a new article about this uh, uni- uh, University of Oxford uh, hit piece against the, against, the, against the green grass grazers. Here we go, folks. It's going <laughs> to yeah, be a yeah, back and forth. Yeah. It's going to be very – that's going to be interesting. I'm looking yeah. forward to yeah. that article. Yeah. And will that be on EcoWatch yeah, as well? A, it's going to be on EcoWatch Great. in the next Can't couple weeks. Can't wait to see that. Great. And – John, do you, you know, I like to, um, I like to open it up to the folks who are listening. Sure. What's one question that you have for folks at home? Folks who are listening, folks who are tuning in, folks who are listening to this podcast. What's one thing that you would like them to answer? Uh, that's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> one thing to answer is, uh, uh, you know, what can, they, what's one thing that they could do in this coming week? to uh, create a, a, a healthier diet and a healthier planet. Great. What's one thing you can do in this week to create a healthier diet and a healthier planet? Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been The Big Picture Show with your host, Josh Tickell. This week's guest, John Rulak. This show will be available in multiple formats in multiple places. Please give us a like. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a